Hello, this is Michael Hexter, and welcome to Politics 2100 here on YouTube. So in this episode, I'm continuing the discussion of fascism uh, that I started a couple episodes ago. And I want to talk about the paradoxical uh, nature of fascism and why it's so difficult for some people who oppose fascism who are on the left um, have a trouble have trouble in grasping and also fighting fascism and understanding the people who are swept up in it and and what how they might be thinking and how and and their their motivations and so um, and I think um, that uh, one way to think about it uh, or fascism or at least let, let me just start first on the on the service level or on the on the manifest level of a paradox of um, fascism and that's what I mentioned in that previous video uh, about the simultaneous sense of victimhood and the propensity propensity to victimize at the same time so um, that there is an intense uh, sense that one is a victim of circumstance and of um, of uh, ben of malevolent forces, um, and that these malevolent forces have conspired to um, to make one's life worse. To um, that they are taking over the world. That they are that they are um, uh, grasping power and resources from you and you have to fight them for those resources. So, and, um, and the leader of the fascist movement um, or leaders, but um, uh, often it becomes concentrated in a leader. The leader is there to um, punish the um, evildoers um, and, and sort of, and to create a drama in people's minds of this great, the strong man who is going to punish uh, the bad people, okay? And the bad people are sort of often two groups. One of them is a sort of an external bad people or people who are, or people who are lower in some way or another considered to be uh, beneath one. And then also people who are considered to be infections or in some way or another are uh, mingling with you, but they are not you, so that they are uh, a sense of, um, evoke a sense of, of pollution, okay, of, of, of uh, our primitive uh, uh, brain that is concerned about infection and about sickness and so forth and so on. And this is uh, projected onto a group of people uh, often, uh, sometimes uh, in other circumstances, non-European circumstances, not the Jews, but in European circumstances uh, or European uh, societies, colonial societies that that uh, are developed from Europe, uh, European culture, the Jews are uh, a prominent group of this sort of internal group that could be also very powerful so they're not uh, and 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 not necessarily below or outside but they're inside anyway so this is uh but it's par so anyway the sense of victimization uh quickly turns into or simultaneously exists with a a delight in and a, a desire for victimizing these people so um I guess you would say, how, what's paradoxical about that? So, you know, there are these bad people and you want your hero, quote unquote, to to um, uh, uh, punish them. And uh, so, but these two states of mind coexist. Uh, in other words, one is directly supporting the other, the sense that one is a victim. And, 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 and so you want to see a very... Um, uh, you, the fascist or the fascist follower, want to see a very graphic um, um, and, and, and uh, uh, certainly in words, starts in words, it starts in, um, uh, but then often in action. You want to see in action a, uh, uh, 
this punishment being meted out and and that will satisfy you or that will or you believe that will satisfy you you believe you the fascist believe that will satisfy you so anyway so this but you so you feel at once you're a victim you're at the same time you become empowered by this um a connection with this uh, movement, a connection with this um, leader in particular that it's concentrated in a person. And so and and the ideology, you know, hinges on it is an ideology. It hinges on ideas about biology often and about um, sort of visible differences um, and or biological metaphors. Um, and so and it's not it's not an idea about um uh, a a rational application of intellect and of of using your mind to um, uh, uh, better the world and to have discussions of issues and ideas that uh, um, uh, are commonly shared that's anathema to this way of thinking so anyway so the the paradox um, uh, is in this paradox is is something that exists in our uh logical systems okay there are paradoxes of various um that are in mathematics and in logic and so forth and so on that are um not uh easily soluble and and there are things that exist on the edge of our our rationality in different ways and and the tools we have in terms of mathematics and in and in language uh uh can't always express everything that we want them to express and uh, they are good tools and they are helpful tools but they have these paradoxes in them so and without a reckoning with these paradoxes without some way of uh, being in contact with them so the, anyway this is let me take a step back and saying and say that I wrote a paper in graduate school that um, where I uh, explored the idea of paradox in psychology and in um, epistemology, okay, um, and unpublished manuscript. Um, but And I'm sort of drawing from some of that thinking that I did uh, a couple decades ago. But anyway, so um, I think that I, one of the things that I think in that paper that I made a sort of a uh, a continuum or a spectrum of professions and of, of disciplines that um, uh, are uh, that deal with or tolerate paradox better or not so well. OK, so in other words, so there are some disciplines that require uh, only grappling with problems that that one doesn't encounter these edge paradoxes of our thinking. For instance, the most famous, one of the most famous paradoxes is the liar's paradox. If I say I am now lying, it's insoluble, you know, whether I'm lying or I'm not lying. In other words, so, so you can't tell, uh, I mean, you can eventually that, f you, if you say I am now telling you lie or I'm lying, it's like, you know, am I, you know, am I not? <laughs> You know, it's like uh, so. So it's now it doesn't maybe to some people. Well, that's kind of an, you know weird intellectual game. That you, but anyway, there are, it's it's a fundamental paradox that expresses itself in many different ways. And it gets to some of the uncertainties of communication and that we all grapple with. And those and the use of language, language is a representational medium. And so the liar's paradox gives you an opening to understand the the difficulty of being in communication with people who are using symbols like the language i'm using now to you know are they using it in a way that you know is truthful can i rely on them so forth and so on and 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 that's a, a fundamental question we have and we constantly sort through um uh or if not lying, you know, are they are they just misrepresenting things out of ignorance and so forth and so on? So there's all kinds of complexities involved in communication. Anyway, 
so there are disciplines. So just to get back to the sort of typology, I, I, um, and maybe I should find a way to put my, if I can find the, the, the it was written in a pre-internet era, um, or if not pre-internet, but pre-web era, um, uh, this document or the, or a, a, a portion of it. But anyway, um, the, um, I, I found that some disciplines are more focused on the sort of rational coherence and consistency that avoids paradox that says, you know, there's an, they, that they hold out the idea that there's a non-paradoxical understanding of the world that is true, okay, for instance, in engineering or in um, certain, in science, in almost all sciences, they proceed from the fact that I, we can create a non-paradoxical logical understanding of the world based on fact, based on evidence that we accumulate over time or, and kind of, you know, and, and, and uh, through conf disconfirming or confirming certain statements and and via the use of data so forth and so on so and this can be not and this uh body of knowledge can be considered to be consistent and and logical logically a whole thing but anyway there are there are you know disciplines that like literature and philosophy and um, uh, where paradox and, and, and even more in the creative arts where paradoxes are explored and created and encouraged and, and, and where in some sense the, um, they're supposed to get people uh, fascinated and interested in insoluble, in things that are almost insoluble or that seem insoluble, at least in the beginning, maybe you solve it at the end, maybe it doesn't, the tension of dramatic, for instance, storylines and, and narratives, you know, um, uh, you could say also use paradoxes or use our interest in paradoxes of various kinds. Uh, you know, I'm obviously, uh, that's a logical word or that's a word from logic and, and um, uh, so forth and so on, but, and people are not, thinking in those terms when they write a story or when they, you know, perform a drama. But anyway, that that um, so but that's captivating for people. So people can get involved in those things because and, you know, I hypothesize or, you know, that basically our tools, our language and our uh, mathematics and so forth and so on cannot capture all of our experience. It can't it just so our experience continues to grow, to evolve, and so forth and so on. So, it, so we continually, our, our language changes, our, the math um, uh, underlies it, also develops on its own. But, but we are continually grasping something that is much more complex than what our language and, and our science uh, um, has can, can contain so so we are in in a way in um uh, uh constant tension with this paradoxical whole so anyway so i think that the to really get that people can feel so the fascists can feel both victimized and victimizers and also at the same time become victimizers and be vict and one flows from the other now people will say well yes of course that's psychological that's anyway turning passive into active so uh a a uh, defense mechanism from psychoanalytic psychology is turning passive into active so and it's uh it's observed by uh, it's not part of the sort of standard cognitive behavioral uh, dominant paradigm that we have currently, but anyway, but from an earlier but still relevant uh, psychological model, turning passive into active means, well, so you were a victim and now and then you become a victimizer. So is observed in people who uh, are abusers, they often were abused. So there's a cycle of abuse and, um, did the thing is though that they uh 
turning passive into active suggests that you know they are uh, in one state and then they go to this other state in other words the passivity to activity but it's really if you accept this idea of paradoxical uh, you know or that, that people are, can be paradoxical that yes the victimizer is also feeling victimized or is somehow is easily uh you know provoked into thinking that they are the victim and uh even as they victimize or that they uh, uh or they if if they certainly if they're caught they you know will will try to to um act the victim rather than be in their action they are a victimizer so anyway uh, at that time at that moment so um anyway so that this paradoxical state uh is something that it's hard it's as you see it's it's actually you know it forms the basis of escaping so the bully and this is bullying is part of this paradoxical victim victimizer victim victimizer complex um the bully is escaping their um their aggression okay by claiming that they are the aggressed upon that they are the so that this this uh, attraction to this um uh i'm not celebrating at all this dual um state but to understand how close close together they are in people like trump and and in uh you know desantis and others or at least, uh, at least how close they seem. I mean, I'm not inside <clears throat> their heads, over and so on. But certainly, if you look at their what they say, if you if what they say and how they politic, and also uh, the laws that certainly they try to pass, you know, you you have this sense that one of them is it comes from the other, and that's classical fascism, and also you know part of this anyway paradoxical um combination of these two things so so it's it's kind of like someone with a logical mind so anyway the people who on the left who are trying who i am trying to talk to in these videos largely those people i mean maybe other people too or people who are progressive or liberal um, or, you know, maybe even centrist or so on and so on. But anyway, but certainly more to the left, um, those people are um, trying to have a non-paradoxical mental, coherent mental model of reality. Uh, sometimes I think there needs to be work done on that. Um, and And it's not a wrong idea to try to have one of those but anyway, but they are challenged by um, this idea of people who are um, both victimizers and victim victims or feel themselves to be victims and are victimizers or that they they vacillate between the two. They they also play with that to some degree. So they um, and and often on the left, um, there's a. A sympathy with or even you you feel yourself to be part of the oppressed and you also you know you identify with or you have sympathy with it because you're not but you feel like you're on the side of the oppressed over and so on and so you're down so the up down metaphor is something and you can't think well the victimizer victimizer is up and they're uh, they're on top so you it plays with the vertical dimension of um thinking that one has uh from a, a left uh a liberal left perspective um and um so um and that um uh you know and that that uh it's hard then to understand that th that this person the fascist or fascist follower think of themselves as both being you know a low person who's low the same time a person who's high so low and high they're they're vacillating they don't think of themselves well i'm part of the working class so i'm a salt of the earth or i'm part of the ruling class and i'm, I'm a capitalist and i look down upon the world from on high um so 
that if one is operating with a class uh, model of you know society uh, that that's um, it's hard to figure that out because that the person is is operating in between those two things and I mean some of this is also I mean the classical fascist comes from the petty bourgeoisie or the the sort of uh, middle class in some way or another or you know uh, from a, a small property owning class so they are in a way you know it's hard to say where they are in the vertical model of society they are sort of somewhere in between um, so uh, and I think as I've hinted at in other videos I think the class model of Marxism it, it is very illuminating in some ways and also limiting in other ways um, and politically and also in terms of uh, the building a socialist society building a functioning uh, uh, socialist economy so or social democratic left whatever you want or cooperative commonwealth um, uh, you know however you want to think of that so um, but anyway um, I just wanted to focus on so I think that the left certainly doesn't have a good tolerance for this paradox of people who are high low or people who think of themselves as so I'm trying to get you give you a sense of of how to understand that paradox and to think about it um, and, and it is it, pa turning passive into active is one way you can think of it um, but that also I think that doesn't quite capture this um, this uh, ability to turn around to turn things around to to be uh, uh, neither one thing or the other to not be consistent and be logical and so forth and so on and that playing with illogic is something also that neo-fascists and fascist leaders do they play with it they they attempt to gaslight they attempt to create a world of sort of flickering reality and so they're not interested in consistent um, solid data and solid research about the world and then building a program based on that they're interested in in turning things around and making it a flickering reality and that so why is that um, is there any attraction to that for some people well I mean some of it is a repetition of trauma you could say it's part of having you know grown up in some kind of authoritarian family maybe that's a theory that's a speculation that they are um, uh, at the same time also um, are the models that we there's been a failure of the sort of rational models of how at least in the United States in terms of what's the politically dominant hegemonic model on the left not on the the real left but in the democratic party and so forth and so on on the the centrist the center left or the center right left uh i guess i guess i'm talking about more about the center left and this you know that the dominant model if you think of barack obama or bill clinton and so forth and so on is a model of of rationality and of quote-unquote science and so forth and so on that is very um uh class bound in some way or another it's it's very also middle class um uh and upper class uh favoring model and so people who feel um and this is you know chris arnade's work on back row kids and front row kids when he talked about the base of the, of uh, trump trumpism in the united states that um uh that's um, I've referred to that in an episode a year ago or more ago but anyway um, uh, Chris Arnade's uh, 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 book um, or he did an essay on medium he said um, divided by difference divided by, anyway divided by meaning I think it's called anyway I'll, I'll put it a reference in the in the uh, description box uh, to it a link to it but anyway he talks about how um the base of 
Trumpism comes from the back row of schools in the United States. In other words, people who are not academically inclined, they may have they may come from a wealthy background that they may, you know, uh, but and be privileged in some way or another. They may not be. They could be people who are on the outs and, and who, are, who are very unlucky or very, um, uh, uh, you know, you know, have some misfortune in their society, in their family or in their in, in you know, their work and so forth and so on. But any or their business. But they feel like they're the, the tools of you know, whatever school that's given by school learning or academic learning or college learning is not, are not helpful to them. Are they also discriminatory toward them that they're excluded from those things? They feel like it's a form of victimization, that it's, it's something that they, they have trouble with. And there could be people, for instance, with learning dis disorders of various kinds who are unrecognized and undiagnosed and, you know, um, maybe you know so there is a higher proportion of people who in that group who, who do have those things and they feel um uh victimized by the rationality of the sort of professional managerial class who is attracted to the democratic party um uh culture and and that that seems to be a, the polarizing that describe it's more than even a class uh, divide. It's not really a class divide, even though the fascists try to make you think it's a class divide. It's it's about education and attitude toward education and rationality and logic and so forth and so on and um, sort of uh, stepwise accumulation of certificates and so forth and so on and then getting ahead by doing uh, that kind of um, uh, thing. Uh, and 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 through professions or through um, logical uh, enlightenment via enlightenment principles and so forth and so on. So anyway, people who there are people who feel this is a club. In other words, you could think of maybe fascism and Trumpism as this club of people who. Um, and this is a particularly United States kind. You couldn't say that about so much about. Um, uh, the Nazis in in Germany in the mid 20th century, but um, certainly uh, there's a no nothingism in the U.S. that has something to do with uh, people who are who who feel like they want to be captivated and moved, and they feel like a leader has to do that for them. They feel like they've been powerless, and now this they've been powered by these emotional experiences that connect them to this movement and this leader and but they they have great distrust and skepticism of people who try to make appeals to them based on ideas and logic and so forth and so on and so anyway so i'm uh and 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 you know i think uh and some of it is has to do with also you know cognitive uh blocks they might have to getting ahead in that kind of thing because of acoustic, you know, basic some kind of learning disorder that they never over were was diagnosed, never came. I don't want to get too much into that kind of speculation. Some people do. Some people also just the the culture of educate, go to college and that's the only alternative in the United States is also and become a computer programmer. Not everybody can be a computer programmer. Not everybody wants to be. And so it's an honoring of manual labor. You know, we, we don't have that culture. We haven't had that, haven't had that culture in, you know, 60, 70 years in the United States. And, um, and so uh, uh, we, we just, or at least until recently, until the pandemic in a way, but sort of out of, uh, kind of transparently self-interested um, uh, reasons. But anyway, um, uh, but so there has been an honoring of the, the whole spectrum of human virtue and human talent and so forth and so on. So that very narrow um, way to look at it has also created this polarization between, and, and anyway, so, so created a fertile ground for people to embrace uh these 
narratives of revenge and redemption um, uh, that are not about taking steps into the future, but more about, you know, um, returning to a past and also at the same time, you know, meeting out vengeance and having uh, uh, on people who are your um, torturers, who are your who are mocking you, you mock them rather than they mock you. You have the sense that they're mocking you and they're looking down on they're looking down on you. No, no, you want to make them uh, pay. Um, and so anyway, uh, probably, well, I'll, I'll touch on this in future videos. Just wanted to put this out there. Uh, share your thoughts and comments uh, in the comment section. Um, and let maybe we can have a discussion there. Um, also, please like the video if there's something uh, interesting in it that you know you want to point out. And also, uh, please uh, subscribe to Politics 2100 and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.